All right, guys. I'm so glad that y'all are on the call tonight. I'm Melissa Shaver, Emerald Ambassador with Plexus Worldwide, and this is our Gem Explosion team call tonight. And I'm really excited to introduce to you Kelly Norman. Many of you already know her. Some of y'all were introduced to her last week. Um, but I just want to share real quick. I got to share it with, uh, with a couple of our people last week. I met Kelly my very first Super Summer, I mean Super Saturday, um, which was in 2014. So four years ago was my first one. And she was um, our speaker and host that year it looks so different four years later but it was it's what got me on fire it's what made me ask the what ifs it made me sit in a room and say if they can do it i can do it but she was someone that i immediately wanted uh she gave me aspiration i mean she aspired me to be better uh, i always share with you find those people that you see qualities in that you desire in yourself and use those people as mentors even if they're virtual mentors kelly and i have never met one on one ever but I watched her trainings. I listened to how she speak to her, spoke to her team. I saw her stance of who she was that morning. Um, and I modeled many of those qualities myself because of that. So she's a pretty big person to me because she was one of the first leaders that I met under the umbrella of Plexus. And then whenever I became an Emerald and got to go to leadership training, she was actually one of my trainers at corporate. And I got to see the power of her passion at corporate live. And so I have very high respect for her. I'm really excited about what she's going to share tonight. And Kelly, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And um, I, I said it last week when she introduced me to, to live up to this introduction will be uh, to be a, a fabulous thing I could do. All right, well, I'm gonna jump on here and I'm gonna talk to you for about 28 minutes. I have to get off at 8.30, so um, you will be done at 8.30. What I wanna talk to you tonight is something that's dear on my heart and you'll understand why when, when we get in the middle of this, but you can label this your purpose, vision, and goals for 2018. So I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to throw a statement out here for you. We create what we want in our lives. We create what we want in our lives. You know, I, I focus in on that word create. Because when I look at that statement and when I receive that statement, I think about how I was created to create. You see, I believe that the creator of creators created us. And it, it says in Genesis that God created us in his image. And if he created us in his image and he's a creator, then the creator, then we are creators, right? And so that's why that word feels so good to you. Um, I'd like to switch over to create and manifest rather than thinking about uh, striving uh, in the grind of it all. Yes, we have to do our IPAs and we have to do those things, but if we can start out at a place that we were created to create, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something else out here, is that everything that you need is already been given to you. everything that you need. You see, um, a man told me one time, where the finger of God points, his palm will provide. Where the finger of God points, his palm will provide. You see, I believe when I look at, when I look at you guys here, I believe each and every one of you were created with a destiny, with a purpose on this earth. And it was, it was assigned to you. It was given to you before you took your first breath. And if God's purpose that's on your life right now, if, if he created you and we agree with that, then he gave you a purpose. Then he equipped you with everything you need on the inside. So the seed of it is within there. It just needs to be awakened. It just has to be watered. It just has to, it just has to blossom into uh, the manifestation of what you're called to do. Everything you need is within you. But the problem is, is this word called ego. 
this word that um, like self-esteem. And I'm gonna explain that to you right here. I want you to think about when you learned to ride a bicycle. Okay, can you picture that in your head? When you were, a, when you were a, a young child, you were learning to ride that bicycle. I remember it because I was not very good. <laughs> and um, I, I still don't ride a bike great, but I can ride one. But I can remember learning. And so I would go up to the top of this hill and I would get on my bike and I would get the momentum going. And then at the end, something happened every time I fell. And then I got my bike and I pushed it back up the hill and I went down the hill and then I fell over and over. My mom recalls this story. She said she could, we had a, a glass door on the front door of our house and she would stand behind that glass door and she said she watched me and she could not believe the determination and persistence that I had to get back on, get back on. And finally I learned. But what I want to point out to you is in the middle of learning to ride that bike, I don't ever remember saying things like, oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm a loser. I can't ride a bike. I don't remember that. Now, I may have said a stupid bike, but I didn't call myself stupid. I got back on because I knew I could ride this bike. I got back on and back on. All right, to drive this point home, I'm going to give you another example. There was a man, and he went into a kindergartner class, a kindergarten class, and there was a hundred kindergartners, and he asked these kindergartners, who can sing? A hundred kindergartners got up. And then he said, who can dance? And a hundred kindergartners stood up. Then he went to a room of a hundred adults. And he said, who can sing? And about 15 people stood up. And then he said, who can dance? And then about another 15 people stood up. My friends, I, I'm here tonight and I'm asking you, uh, who told you that you couldn't sing? Who, called, who told you that you couldn't dance? Something happened in between um, when we were children to where we are now. And I believe if we can figure out what that something is, then we're going to find our purpose. We're going to have vision. We're going to meet those goals. We're going to be on to fulfilling everything that we were created for. You know, I find that animals and children create so much easier than you and I do. Think about this. Think about a bird. A bird's going in and it just creates the nest, doesn't it? Uh, a spider weaves its, uh, its web. I, I don't see birds looking at other birds' nests and going, oh, their, bird, their nest is better than mine. Maybe I'm just not meant to make a nest, right? No, because they don't have that ego. They don't have that self-esteem that we have going on inside of us. What about children? Give a child a box of crayons and all of a sudden they're an artist. And they create this picture that they are proud that you stick on your, your refrigerator, right? It's something to think about. I believe if you and I can separate our self-value from our results, then we're going to get where we need to go. And I'm going to say that again. If you and I can separate our self-value, our worth, our identity from our results. so. Let's, let's have, I love examples. So we're going to talk about examples here. Um, okay. So tomorrow I sign up five new ambassadors and they all go fast start gold. At the end of the day, when I look in the mirror, what am I going to be thinking about myself? Huh. I think that I'm kind of all that, right? Well, what about I contact 20 people tomorrow and they all say no. Five of my rock star ambassadors go to another company and about half of my customers have quit because they are growing some funky hair on their chin or something. I don't know, something crazy. So I, at the end of the day, when I look at Kelly Norman in the mirror, what am I going to, what is it going to be so easy to think and to say and to feel about myself? Mother Teresa, one of my very favorite writers, I, I love looking at her life. She really speaks to me in the depths of me. And one thing she said was, do not let praise nor criticism move you, but yet be humble. And I have adopted that as my motto for life, is that Kelly Norman will not let praise nor will I let criticism move me. When I stand in front of the mirror, guys, and I look into my eyes and I see who I am, I am determined to see who God says I am, not what my results were that day. Because both is dangerous. 
for me to think I'm superior or inferior. Neither one of those are humility. And that is what we're getting. That, that is our goal is to walk in humility. So if we can separate our self-value from our results, I think we'll be a thousand times more confident. I think we'll be a thousand times more happier, more freer. So let's jump in. Let's jump in here and talk about purpose. If I was, if I was to ask you, okay, so tell me your purpose. I know, I know your hands would get a little bit sweaty. Your heart would start to race because you would say, Kelly, I just don't know. I've just struggled with finding my purpose. I want to tell you to take a deep breath, but it's okay. You do not have to tell me right now what your purpose is, but what you do have to do is be seeking it out, is to be attentive to that. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. That is done by asking great questions. All right, so let's go through some of those questions. This is going to help you find your purpose. All right, what, ask yourself, what do I love? If you and I were going to go to dinner, this would be awesome. So we got to go to dinner. It's just the two of us. Oh, man, I would love that. And I sat across the table from you, and our conversation would be totally what you would want to talk about. What would your topic be? What would you want to talk about? What is it when you talk about it, you just light a fire with inside of you that you're passionate, you get excited? What is it that you do that you feel like fills your cup? It's like when I do that, I am full. What is it that you're really good at? Okay, so if I was to call you on the phone and I was to say, listen, I need you to do such and such right now. I mean, there's not a lot of time for you to prepare or to... Um, to uh, spend some time thinking about how you're going to do it. I just need you to do it. What could you say, Kelly, don't worry, I got this. And you just know, bam, it would be so easy for you to do. John Maxwell calls this your God-given gift. He says, when you operate out of your God-given gift, it's like you just have to dust it off a little bit, and then you can roll with it. Now, a man-made gift is not that easy. So I ask you, what's your God-given gifts? You know, I know that if you called me and you said, Kelly, I need you to speak to my team um, in the next 30 minutes, and uh, there's not a lot of time for you to prepare, I just need you to encourage them. It's just, I just, right now, I need you to do that. I would like, okay, calm down, I got this. And I would know that within 30 minutes, I could prepare a 30-minute talk to your team that is going to be, uh, transformational. I just know that I can do that and I can do it really quickly because it's a God-given gift. Now, if you came to me and you said, Kelly, I need you to sing to my team. <laughs> I mean, I'm out on that. It's not going to happen. Or if you came to me and you said, Kelly, I need you to bake me an apple pie. I'm going, wait a second. We're going to have to watch some YouTube videos over this deal. <laughs> So there's, a, there's certain things that, like if you wanted me to draw, I mean, I can only draw a stick and that's about it. So I can't do those things. But what I can do is I can speak and I can, uh, I can motivate and I can empower people. Leads me to, I know my purpose. My purpose, and I'll give you an example. My purpose is to help people find their purpose. My purpose is, and I don't like the word motivation. I would rather use transformation. I know that I am a transformational speaker. I know that I can help switch your thinking where it needs to be. So that is, just fills my cup. That, I love to talk about those things. I love to do those things. I know that's my God-given purpose to do that. So. I ask you, what great questions can you ask yourself? What do people compliment you on? What are your strengths? What are your talents? And so spend some time answering this, these questions. So that's purpose. Now, let's go to the next one we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about vision. And if I was going to suggest that you spend more time on one of these from purpose, vision, or goals, I would say vision. Most of your time needs to be spent on vision. And in reality, it is the least amount of time that we spend is on vision. So vision, it's what's going to um, fulfill your purpose. Vision is what puts feet to the purpose. It puts hands on the purpose. Vision drives. It's so, so important. The scripture even says, without vision, my people perish. So if you're wanting life, then you're going to have to have some vision. Vision brings clarity. Vision fuels the ship. 
Now, one thing I want to say about vision is it is not a one-time thing. You don't come and you don't spend time just um, on vision. One day, get up and it's like, okay, I got this. Vision is is a habit, and so I want to share with you my habit of vision. Is this is this is my uh, calendar for the month, and it's in a planner. And so when I every morning there's a time I have allotted out, it's about an hour, is I sit and I, I spend my time in prayer and in worship and in, I, I study the Bible and I'm listening to the voice of God for my life. I always have a pen and a piece of paper because I have found out that when um, I'm having vision for what my purpose is, what it looks like, letting God help me, show me what it looks like, is that I need to write things down because when I get up and I have to deal with life, that emotion's gonna leave me. That's really, really important, guys. When we hear the voice of God, when we hear what it looks like, what we're supposed to be doing, it doesn't mean that we're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna be on top of the mountain and have that high forever. Okay, so I write them down. I saw somebody talking about um, bullet journaling, and I thought, I bet that's what I do because I bullet journal, I just you know it's a few words, and that's what speaks to me. That's my personality. Some of you are very linguistic out here. Some of you are, your cup is full when you write. So I say go for it. Write, write, write. All right. So we talked about purpose and I shared my purpose with you. Now, for me to visualize, so I'm going to give you an example, kind of what that looked like over the past couple of years. As I was sitting there, as I knew my purpose and as I'm visualizing, what does this look like, God? I want to fulfill my purpose. What does it look like? And so I started seeing things like, um, speaking to groups of people. Okay, so I knew that I needed to get out there. I knew my talent was speaking, that I, my purpose was to help uh, equip you. So I needed to be speaking to groups of people. I saw um, things like a mentorship program. I saw um, writing a book. I saw things like this thing where I am right now. And so that was going to put feet to my purpose. Moving on. All right, so we have purpose, we have vision, what does it look like, how, how can we see that? We're gonna talk about goals. Now, this is very important because I know lots and lots of people that found out their purpose, that saw the vision, but that never set goals, and their dream died with them. We have to set goals. We have to, I, I knew that I was going to have to get my John Maxwell certification because you see, um, for you to listen to me, maybe you heard John, I was John Maxwell certified. And so maybe that made you tune your ear in. I knew it would open doors of opportunities. I knew I would be able to have workshops if I could get his name attached to me. And plus he had things that I needed. So I got my John Maxwell certification and I set goals to an hour a day that I would work on my certification. And then I'm writing a book, remember? So I had to set a goal on, on how much time I was going to write my book. And then I had to set um, goals with my Plexus business. One thing I want to throw to you is if you have a hard time meeting goals, set short goals, very small goals, so that you hit them and it will give you a confidence to continue on. So if you're having a hard time meeting your goals, you need to set smaller goals and focus on that. So that was, a real, that was a really quick rundown of your purpose, of vision, and goals. Now, I want to warn you, is that as you're going through this process, that there's a voice that you and I have. And I like to call this voice the voice of reason. The voice of reason sounds like, what does that look like? How are you going to make that happen? Okay, so for me, I told you that, my, what my purpose was, I saw the vision, I saw the workshops. Now, I am a small town girl, I live in a town of 700 people, we have a small, small ranch, I mean, I'm just a country girl. And as I was visualizing some of these things, here I am with the reality of living in a little town in southern Oklahoma with these huge dreams, and I would hear things like, how are you going to write a book? You have no idea how to write a book. Ha, um, you're going to have a workshop, you're going to have uh, conferences, who's going to pay to come listen to you? People don't even know who you are. Over and over these things. And so I start, start hearing those. And this, my friends, this voice, you have this voice too. And, it's, it, and I would say that this voice has stolen dreams, has stolen purposes from people because they listen to the voice. 
the voice of reason will always come. And this is when your affirmations are so very, very important. Do you say affirmations? Do you have them lined down? And that's what I feel like one of my specialties is, is helping people with affirmations, say their affirmations. Now, I believe um, positive affirmations are great. I mean, you can't go wrong by saying positive stuff. But what I like is to specialize affirmations for your life, for your purpose, for your goals where you are in life. And I have, uh, I think I have an amazing formula that leads you through very easily on how to get these affirmations specifically for your life. No cookie cutter affirmations. And that's what we're going to talk about in December, uh, excuse me, January 27th in Grapevine, Texas. I have an all day workshop. It's called Living to Leave a Legacy. And what that day looks like is we'll start the morning out. I talk about identity. I love to talk about identity, mindset, and, uh, and affirmations this is the very first thing we're going to kick off. Now, in that, I tell my personal story. This is the only time that I share intimate, vulnerable uh, details, transparent details of my life. So for you to hear these things, you have to hear them at a workshop. And um, so I, I will weave my story, which will be very surprising to a lot of you. And after that, we'll go into offense. So I ask you, are you sick and tired of being offended? <laughs> because I have found out that as, uh, as adults, we walk through life carrying around offense where people have offended us. And there was a day in my life when I was sick and tired of strife. I was sick and tired of all the junk that goes along with that. And I realized that being offended was one of the biggest reasons that I was having problems in life, not being able to reach my goals, always having drama, always having strife. So I uh, spent a lot of time on this subject and I'm going to teach you how to let go of offense. And are you ready? I'm going to teach you how never to be offended again. Now, do, you, do you think you can never be offended? Well, I do. And I think that I can equip you and show you how to do that. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that anytime you're underneath my training is that my goal, I work really, really hard to make things easy to understand because I'm very simple. And I know like I like to learn very simple. So you'll never hear things like I never try to talk over anybody's head. It is things that you can stick in your tool belt. I believe that we all have imaginary tool belts. I believe some of your parents did a fine job of equipping you. And so some of them didn't. And so I'm going to help out a little bit and give you some tools to stick inside of that tool belt and uh, be able to utilize that. Then we're going to go into talking about boundaries. I'm going to teach you how to have boundaries with people, with money, with food, and I'm going to teach you why it's important to have boundaries. Then we're going to break for lunch. <clears throat> and um, you heard me talk about that book, right? Well, the printer has it today, and I will have um, 400 books in hand and grapevine on January 27th. So we're going to, you guys will break for lunch, and I'm going to, uh, that'll be a chance you can pick up my book. I'll sign it for you. And after that, we're going to go into the afternoon. And the afternoon session is from 1 to 3, and I'm going to teach on John Maxwell's book, How to Put Your Dream to the Test. It's a marvelous book that he has written, it has 10 questions that goes along with it. What I like about this book is that I have realized that many of us have pursued life carrying a dream that was not our dream, that somebody else put their dream on us. And so I'm going to help you identify some ownership to, is this your dream or did somebody else put this dream on you? I'm going to help you bring clarity to it. I'm going to help you set a pathway, a strategy out to walk out your dream, walk out that purpose. I'm going to uh, teach you how to have tenacity and passion in the dip. Now, DIP is an acronym for distance in between your purpose. John Maxwell uh, comes up with this, and, and see how that spells DIP. And when we're moving to our purpose, now, many of us would like to think our purpose is this, right? Oh, here we go. It's a joy shrine to our purpose. But no, but actually going to your purpose does this, and you're, you're down here. So you need to learn how to have passivity. Uh, uh, um, passion and tenacity in that. Day. I just made a new word there, didn't I? <laughs> um, passion and tenacity. Okay, so so many people say this is so hard. This must not be my purpose. 
no, it's hard for all of us. There's different times in our, in our journey that are so hard, and I'm going to teach you how to push through there. And we're going to end up talking about living a life of significance of living a legacy. And in 2017, God gave me this word legacy. And that is what I made my workshop. My first workshop was February of 2017 in Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, my workshops are also called Living to Leave, Leave a Legacy. And I'm so passionate about this because I have a grandmother and I have a mother that you will learn more about that left a legacy in, for me. And that legacy was kindness. It was unconditional love. It was grace for myself and for others. It was strength, courage. And I am, out of all the hard things that I have walked through in my life, that legacy has carried me. And I just want to empower you and encourage you that your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, the people, I would say 100 generations down, are saying, leave a legacy. I'm saying the people that are around you that you've been entrusted to, that even what you hand off to them will be handed off to their generations, that your life on this earth, my friends, is, can make a greater impact in the years that you're breathing breath and you're walking on it. And so I carry that word legacy around. The name of my book is Living to Leave a Legacy. And as you well know, that our convention this year is named Legacy. I had no idea. I heard it the first time you heard it in, at Super Saturday. So uh, a lot of confirmation. That's that's how God speaks to me. To keep, He gives me little nuggets in life to, to let me know, Kelly, you're going the right way. Keep going. It's like that carrot out there. The first year, and I may have shared this. I can't remember if I shared it with this team or not. But um, the first year convention, um, I joined in February. Convention was that summer. And I started signing people up. I knew I had to get them trained. I'm like, okay, I'll do a Facebook group. I mean, this is in the very beginning of stuff, guys. We didn't have really anything to go by. All of my leaders would kind of join at the same time. So I'm sitting here. I'm thinking, I got six ambassadors. They got to know how to do this. So I, I, I open a Facebook page, but God stopped me before I, before I made it. And he says, pray about what you name this. So I stopped and I prayed and God gave me a scripture and it's found in Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring sight to the blind, to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captive free. And the Lord says, I will bring freedom to people through your hands with plexus. And so that day I named my group Freedom with Plexus because I heard the Lord speak to me. And that was the year that convention was called Freedom. That's pretty cool, huh? Um, I went to a woman's prayer meeting after that, and they had some, I don't know if you've ever been around prophetic people or not, but that's kind of my jam. And so people that kind of hear the Lord, that can pray over you. And I was at this women's conference, and they had a time when you could go back and people would pray over you. And so these ladies were back there, and they were praying, and then one of them stopped. They had no idea who I was. I asked nothing for prayer. They just um, wanted to hear God. And they said, um, all I can see is a big sign over your head that says freedom. And they didn't know me. So anyway, God is so good. And I just want my life just to bring glory to who he was and all the goodness that he has brought to me. So that's it. So I hope if you are close to Grapevine that you will get a ticket. I'm sure Melissa will have that, uh, that information. And, and I'm telling you guys, even if you don't live there, get there. If you're able to get a ticket, uh, get a plane ticket, bring some friends with you, I promise you that you will look back. I, I know this. I know that you will look back and you will say, that was a pivotal day in my life. So thank you, Melissa, for having me on. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I feel like we just got crammed in a whole bunch of information. I was writing 90 to nothing. So thank you for your time. I know you have to run. You're jumping onto another call. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks for being on with us tonight, and we will see y'all next week. Right. Have a great Bye. night.